Toyota C52 Housing and Gear Train Removal. Before the housing bolts can be removed, I must remove some shifter detents. The detents are under this 6mm Allen head bolt. There are two here and a third on the other side. Under the Allen head bolt is a metal sleeve and spring. The spring needs to be inspected for damage or wear. If the springs are bent or stretched out, they will need to be replaced. The detent ball is still inside the hole in the housing. I'm using a magnet and a screwdriver to remove the detent ball. Take a note of the condition and size of the detent ball. You may have different size detent balls. Remove the third detent bolt, sleeve, spring, and ball. You can use gravity to remove the detent ball by tipping the transaxle housing. Also remove the reverse detent bolt which has the spring, ball, and sleeve all built into one assembly. Remove all the housing bolts. Some of these bolts may be different size, so take a note from where they came from. Remove the reverse idler bolt and notice that the bolt has a sealing washer on it. This washer needs to be replaced every time. You can use an aluminum or copper crush washer. The lip or indentation on the aluminum washer indicates that it is all used up. The last three housing bolts are located inside the bell housing. These need to be removed. If a complete overhaul is being performed, the quill will need to be removed. There is a gasket and possibly an oil seal that will need to be replaced. Because this is a training transaxle, we will be skipping that step. Rotate the transaxle with the bell housing down. If the transaxle has never been taken apart before, the sealant will need to be loosened using a tap from a hammer and by prying up using a screwdriver and the built-in separation tab. The housing on the training transaxle comes off easy, but sometimes it gets stuck on the two shaft bearings. As you lift up on the housing, you may need to lightly tap on both shafts to separate the housing. If you need more force than a soft tap, use a plastic or a soft faced hammer so you don't damage the shafts. Sometimes they will catch on the shift shaft. Again, a gentle tap will normally free up the housing. The housing will now pull off. The gear train is now visible. Remove the reverse idler gear shaft. This is where the bolt threaded into. That bolt held this shaft in place and during installation it will be critical that the bolt hole in this shaft is properly aligned with the housing. Remove the reverse idler gear. Note the direction and inspect it for wear and damage. Notice that the teeth are pointed on one side and flat on the other side, plus the area for the shift fork. Remove the reverse shift fork mechanism. Remove the two bolts with a 12mm socket. Use both hands and grab a hold of both shafts and the shifter mechanism all at once. Lift up and shake the gear train to remove it from the housing. Put the gear train and shift fork mechanism on the workbench and remove the shift fork mechanism. Because the shift fork mechanism is a bit tricky, we will try to keep it together and inspect for wear as an assembly. If the fork and rod mechanism comes apart, there are some interlock balls or pins that can fall out. The input and output shafts can now be separated and worked on separately.